Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Bridges. I'm sure you must have heard of ChatGPT. After all, it has got lots of buzz all around the internet. But as a software engineer, can you imagine to use ChatGPT for your day-to-day -day work? This is exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. We will see with the help of ChatGPT how we can save our time. To access ChatGPT, first of all, we need to have an account in chat.openai.com. Once you have that, you can access the ChatGPT. But as a developer, you might be writing the code all the time in your development IDE. Every now and then, going back and forth from your IDE to the browser, you may not like that. But the good news is, we have the ChatGPT plugin available for different IDE. If you are working with IntelliJ, Visual Studio Code, Jupyter Notebook, etc., you can add the plugin in your IDE. In this video, we will see how we can access the ChatGPT plugin in IntelliJ IDEA. So, let's get started. In the IntelliJ IDEA, if you need to add plugin, you just need to go to the preferences. In the plugins, you can search for ChatGPT. You will get the option to install it. Once you install that, you will see the ChatGPT plugin on the right side of your window. And if you click that, you will see the same screen as you have seen over here. If you are not logged in already, you will get the option to log in and otherwise you will be able to access the ChatGPT. In this window, you can search for anything. You will get different responses and based on that responses, you can just use whatever is required for you. Let's see how we can get help from the ChatGPT as a developer. For example, we have a list of integers and we want to get a sum of this. There could be several ways of it, but we don't know the syntax. In that case, we can ask ChatGPT for the help and let's see what response ChatGPT come up with. If I'm searching for sum of integer list, it has given us the Python example, but we need to look for Java. So we need to provide the Java and if we search for that let's see the answer here you can see we have got the code and in this code we have a list and then it has applied the map to int method on the stream so this is what we can use over here and instead of this we can just use the list.stream there could be different ways of doing the same thing but if we have searched for this it came up with one answer Maybe if we we'll search again, it might come up with a different answer. So basically, this answer is the opinionated answer of the ChatGPT machine learning algorithms. We would like to have different answers and we should be able to decide by our own which is the best possible solution for us, right? So here we can search for best ways to sum integer list in Java 8. Let's see how many answers we can get now. We have the first answer for each method. Another answer is to use the reduce method. And then the map to int method that we have seen earlier. According to your use case, you can pick any of them. The second problem could be like here we have the map to int method, and you know to some integer list you can use map to int, but you don't really remember the syntax at the moment. You can search for how to use map to int. The good thing about ChatGPT is it explains about the solution that it has given. It has explained what map to int method is and how it works. This was the basic thing, but ChatGPT can help in more better ways. Like, suppose you need to develop a microservice. For developing a microservice, you may use a Spring Boot. Let's see how ChatGPT can help over there. The first thing that you need is the dependencies. Here we can search for Spring Boot dependencies for Gradle, if we are working with Gradle application. Here we have got the content of the build.gradle file. You can just copy it, paste in your build.gradle file and you are ready to start with the Spring application. Second thing you need is the main class in the Spring Boot. We can search for Spring Boot main class. We have got the code for the main application. The beauty is it has not only given us the code, but explain about the annotation that it has used, the purpose of run method, and how this main application can help you start your application. Next thing is about the controller. So we can search for the Spring Boot controller. And if you search for that, it is explaining what controller is and then it should come up with the example. Here we have the example of the REST controller and with the get mapping. This is the example that ChatGPT has provided to us. But we may have some specific scenarios like we need to create a post API with the request header and request body. Here we are searching for Spring Boot post API with request header. We have got the post mapping and also we have got the request header within this API. Whatever specific requirement we have, we can also get it from the chat GPT. Now, let's say you need to connect with some external API within your Spring Boot application. So there could be different ways for that. If we search for call external APIs from Spring Boot and it has given us the solution based on the REST template. 
and it has explained some of the other details like if you need to call get mapping or if you need to make a post api calls then we have the response for the post api here we can search for other answers as well like we need to call the fin client we have got all the steps that are required to add the fin client first of all we need to add the dependencies for that it has provided the build.gradle or pom.xml example we have to create an interface it has given the example for that also it has explained what all annotations are doing within this code similarly we need to add the client in our service so here is the code and then we need to add the enable fin client in our main application all the steps you have got and you can just follow these steps and your api layer will be ready not only the code but if you need to provide the configuration like suppose you are working with kafka if you need to provide a kafka property file in spring kafka you can see we have got the kafka properties and to use them in the spring boot base application we have got how to add those property by adding the spring.kafka not only the development tasks but also devops tasks can be done quite easily with the help of chat gpt for our spring boot microservice if you need to define a docker file docker file for spring boot so it has defined the complete docker file similarly if you need to define kubernetes files you need to define the terraform strips everything you can do it from here it is simply like chatting with your fellow developer if you are stuck somewhere you need to get some solution you are asking someone he or she may come up with some responses based on those responses you can ask further questions and then eventually you will be able to get the final solution same thing you can do with chat gpt this is all about it. You can also try to see if you can use ChatGPT in your day-to-day -day development. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and happy coding.